Don't you dare! This time on Bandit Patrol. Little turkey. Fox fur is flying. Oh! oh. When two orphan families learn to share. Easy, easy. Then. Ooh, you're trying to challenge me. An American icon needs a helping hand. And an irritated mama duck. Come on, we're trying to help you. Creates chaos in a parking lot. You're gonna get hit. The temperature is rising in western Kentucky. You are beautiful. And so is the workload for wildlife rehabber Nikki Christian. I rehab all kinds of different animals. I never know what I'm going to come across when I'm rescuing an animal. What were you doing out here, honey? Rehab work keeps her on the road quite a bit. Today, Nikki and her daughter, JC, are at home. Let's start out with this side. They're beginning a difficult process of combining two families of orphaned foxes she's recently taken in. My plan is to take these two smaller families and actually merge them into one big family. Larger fox families actually do better in the wild. All right, JC. Now it's time for you to go hunting. <laughs> They're all in that log. Before Nikki can merge the families, she must first begin a strict vaccination protocol. Foxes are highly, you know, susceptible to getting the distemper. See, it's good stuff, it's good stuff. It's a virus and it can spread through the whole family. It's highly contagious for these foxes and I need to get them vaccinated as soon as possible. It surprised me they don't just try to eat my fingers off. He's like, I don't like you, but it tastes all right. Last one. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Good job, good job. With rehabbing, it's not just about feeding them every single day and then releasing them. I worry about these little guys. I want to make sure that they know exactly what they need to do out in the wild. So I have all these little steps that they have to cross before I let them go. The first step. It's time to eat. Assess their hunting skills. Guess what I got? Oh, you smell it, don't you? Nikki starts with a family of foxes that she affectionately calls the Dukes. I'm gonna give you plenty. Duke's of Hazard was one of my favorite shows growing up, so it just kind of felt right to name them. Bo, Luke, Daisy, and Cooter. The most important thing that I want to see this morning is everybody being aggressive, taking control, eating it, or hiding it. <laughs> one of them just bit my foot, so I'm getting out. Easy, guys. Ooh, Bo. Bo is being the aggressive one. Daisy's being the smart one that's staying back there eating alone. The other two are trying to fight over one mouth at a time. None of these guys have a problem with aggression. All right, can't eat no more. Now you're going to hide. Dig and hide. Bo is taking the mice and he's actually hiding them. That's what he's gonna do in the wild. So he can come back later on and eat. This is exactly what I needed to see. Still don't know how he's a runt. The Dukes show the behavior they'll need to do well in the wild. Now it's time to test the family next door, the Foxy Bunch. All right, come and get him. Come on. These guys are not near as aggressive as the other set was. I'm not liking what I'm seeing right now because I want them out and I want them fighting for their food and they're not doing it at all. Releasing these animals without knowing for sure they can find their own food could be a death sentence. The next couple of weeks are crucial. These guys have to prove to me that they're ready to go out in the wild. The mice that I'll be putting in there next week they're not gonna just lay there. They're gonna run, they're gonna hide, and they're gonna have to chase them. They're not as aggressive, but they're eating. A few miles away, it's dinner time as well. Are you hungry? But fellow rehabber Nancy Reynolds isn't having any problems getting her newest patient to eat. I got it, I got it. She's a very aggressive eater. Her little belly's full. Something really cool is how you know they're full. Can you see the milk line? 
See the difference on the top and the bottom, how white it is right there? It's his little belly and it's full of milk. Is it good? Is it good? Mm -hmm. Not baby. I'll see you later. Caring for animals is a 24 hour a day job. So the calls don't stop even when the sun goes down. A uh, man called me about a fawn. Uh, he was bailing some hay out in the field and he ran over the baby. And hopefully he just nicked it, but I'm not expecting it to look good when I get there. How are you? Pretty good. Here you go. You got a deer for me? Yeah. Oh, I was cutting uh, hay in my field and when I looked back, there was a little deer and uh, one of its legs was gone. So I knew I had to do something with it. The leg is cut completely off. So I know there's lots of veins and arteries. I don't know why it's not bleeding more, but all the limbs are really cold on it. The injury on this spawn is more than I can handle. It's OK. So I'm calling my fellow rehabber, Kristen Allen, and she's going to meet me at the house to pick it up. All the way at the shoulder. Kristen and her newly licensed daughter, Adrian, assess the status of the fawn that Nancy has nicknamed Abby. I've never had a front leg injury like Abby had. I'm very hopeful that I can rehabilitate this animal, but right now I just want to get him through the night. Tomorrow morning, first thing, I'll take him to Dr. Coonsie and just see what we can do. He did an amazing job, amazing. Time is always an important factor when you're dealing with any animal. We just wanted to get him in a situation that he was going to be stable. You know what, Abby? Adrian usually tries to turn the air conditioner on. This is my excuse to turn the heat on. <laughs> it was a miracle that saved this fawn. He should have bled to death. He is the strongest fighter I have ever seen. All we can do is keep him warm until we get home. That's my job. Yep. Flush every bit of nastiness out of there. Back home, they waste no time tending to the wound. I know, I know. Yes, I did. It's really important to get this wound as clean as we possibly can. Any bit of dirt and bacteria can cause infection. Okay, that looks pretty good. After we irrigated all the grass out of it. We covered that wound really good with chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine acts as an antiseptic. It should ward off infection until the wound can be closed. I know, handsome. I know. A fawn can be doing great, and then they can crash. It's going to be a long night. We're going to be up checking on him just to make sure that he's doing well. The most difficult part of rehabbing is deciding when to treat an animal and when to be merciful. I've heard there are a lot of three-legged deer out in the wild, and they thrive. The question is, does he have the will to live to get through this? There you go. Nearby, oh, okay. Nancy's night continues to deliver surprises. Oh, wow. Now she responds to a call about a raptor that a citizen rescuer noticed was unable to fly. He's humongous. He'd been down in a field, and we had to take him because he would not stand a chance of survival on the ground. Go straight for my arm, aren't you? The first thing that I noticed about this raptor is it is definitely a bald eagle. They have very, very powerful beaks. Yep. On it. Feel your keel, buddy. And he will bite. It's like a massive bite. But what concerns me about this bald eagle is I could feel the keel sticking out, which is basically the bone in the breast of the bird. That means they have not had food in a long time. Got to go in the crate. Wings down, buddy. You want his fish? Goodness. Hey, big boy. Ooh, you are not happy in this little crate. This is a very, very cool and exciting moment because this bird is huge, it's powerful, and I have not ever seen him up close like this. Since this bald eagle is a federally protected bird, there's a lot of rules and regulations that go along with these animals. 
I can have a bald eagle in my care for 48 hours or less. Time for the ride. So I'm gonna take this eagle home, give it some food and water, and first thing in the morning, I'm gonna take it to a wildlife center that is licensed to rehab raptors. You are heavy. Back home, Nancy has to transfer the eagle to a bigger crate. Hello, big boy. And this time around, she won't have any help. I head in here with an eagle, not fun. Nope, nope. Ooh, you're trying to talon me, aren't you? And those talons are super sharp. I mean, they would break the bones in my hands if they got a hold of my hands. I'm trying to get him out with keep his wings down because I don't want to hurt him. Ooh, you are really mad. This eagle is fighting me every chance it gets. I have to be careful so I don't get hurt or it doesn't get hurt in the process of moving it from one crate to the other. Quit flapping. This isn't one of my favorite things to do. No. A bald eagle's razor sharp talons and powerful grip turn even a simple cage transfer into a rush. Hang on. This eagle is so strong, it feels like it's going to take off with you holding it. Quit flapping. Wings down. This isn't one of my favorite things to do, but. <laughs> because this was really cool, but it was really scary at the same time. This is the biggest bird that I have dealt with and the most amazing bird. Definitely the strongest. This is a juvenile bald eagle. So as it grows and gets a little older and matures, it will get that white head on it. He is mad. Tomorrow it's off to a local wildlife sanctuary for a full exam. But for now, it's time for some rest. That was a workout. Closing you up, buddy. Abby, the little fawn with the missing leg, survives the critical first night. It was a miracle that saved this fawn. The amount of arteries and veins in this fawn's leg, he should have bled to death. We're gonna go see Dr. Coonsie, okay? But now we need to take him to the vet and get that leg stitched up, and he needs to make it through the surgery. All right, Mr. Avi, you ready? Hey, Dr. Coonsie. Hello. You know, I always bring you the unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Hey, Baylor. Poor thing. I picked him up from Nancy, was barely bleeding. He acts perfect, other than only having three legs. It looks like there ought to be adequate skin there to close it. Okay. The bigger question will be, you know, long-term, how does he do? Can he get around well after we do it? Well, I think let's get hair clipped away and, and flush it out real well, and then I'll just try and close everything up. I'm incredibly nervous as Abby goes into surgery. This poor fawn has gone through so much, and now I'm having to put him under anesthesia. It was awesome. Pretty nasty one to begin with. Yeah. So. Doesn't matter what it looks like, that's for sure. He says, compared to what it looked like, it looks really good now. <laughs> Dr. Coonsy was done. Abby just kind of picked his little head up and looked at us like, hey guys, you know, what's going on? Why are we all here? He says, thanks, Dr. Coonsy. <laughs>
going forward, his balance, um, there's going to be a lot of stress on the opposite leg. So I do worry how he's going to do with that. They're going to be the death of me, all these sweet little fawns. This guy's a fighter. You look so good. He is bound to determine that he's going to live. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. The juvenile bald eagle that Nancy calls Freedom. Hi, Nancy. Hey, how are you? Arrives at the Broadbent Wildlife Sanctuary for a thorough exam. I brought you something very pretty today. Veterinarian Dr. Michael O'Brien and his assistant Scott are on hand to answer the question of why this eagle is unable to fly. Been on the ground for five days, just hopping around around the lake. Well, it doesn't appear that he has any broken wings. His range of motion is good. There's no bone grating on bone. Let's take a look at his mouth and his eyes here, Scott. Uh, but we don't seem to have any parasites in here. <laughs> he does not have any. Doc is giving this eagle a good once over, but he is not finding anything wrong. He gives it some fluids and treatment for dehydration, malnutrition, and hope that it gets better soon. Sounds like a little baby, doesn't it? It does. It sounds like a baby bird. Freedom will be moved to an observation cage where Dr. O'Brien will try to diagnose its condition. But first, it'll have to be treated for parasitic mites common in birds. We're going to go right out the door. And... Awesome. Mites take nutrients away from the eagle, which will make it weaker. So Doc's going to have Scott hold the eagle while he dusts it off. It'll just kill the mites, but it won't harm the bird at all. It's just a real treat for us to get an opportunity to put one of these birds back into the beautiful picture Mother Nature made for them. Over the next few days, Dr. O'Brien will do blood work to determine the sex of the bird and try to solve the mystery as to why this eagle can't fly. We'll do everything we can for him. Cool. Thank you so much. Today, Nikki and her daughter, JC, are up early. Sit down for just a second. It's time for their two sets of orphan foxes to take on their next big challenge. Definitely not my kind of breakfast. The Dukes did great last time, but using live prey is a whole new ball game. As far as the foxy bunch, when they see this live prey, I hope those natural instincts kind of kick in, and I know they'll be ready for the wild. I don't know if I can do this. Why not? Because they're looking at me like that. <laughs> Foxes, they're great for our environment. They keep all the rodent population under control, but it doesn't make it any easier for me to put these cute little mice in this enclosure. Can you do it? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Put them just kind of right in the center and then come on out. Everything that they have eaten has been non-moving. Today is the first time that they're actually going to have to chase and fight for their food. So I'm kind of anxious to see if everybody's going to you know, jump on board or not. Half of me is fighting for the foxes, and the other half is rooting for the mice. Bo's doing his thing, as always. They're doing exactly what I expected these sets to do. They're fighting for it. They are searching everywhere for these mice. It's a good day for the foxes, <laughs> not for the mice. These guys did absolutely perfect. What I'm worried about is these guys over here, so let's see how they do. Once again, you're up. Next door, it's time to put the foxy bunch to the test. Hopefully, this live prey will kind of kick in that natural instinct and make them go hog wild. Come just stare at it. Grab it. Foxes and mice are natural adversaries. But it seems Nikki's little orphans didn't get the memo. Now the mouse is crawling away. It's crazy. This is very concerning to me right now. 
I expected them to not be as aggressive, but I didn't expect them to do absolutely nothing. If they can't find their prey and hunt, or even have the desire to, that's not good. The ones that have eight, 20 mice are trying to get through the fence to eat more mice, and the other ones are doing nothing. Nikki needs a plan to jumpstart the fox's natural instincts. Grab it. Don't just stare at it. Without proof they can find food on their own, release is out of the question. It's almost like a ticking time bomb. I have to get them ready for a winter. And the quicker that I get them out there, the quicker they find their food source, they find their place of shelter and rest before winter kicks in. This is nuts. Are we scared of the mouse? Mr. Obby, you ready? Obby the little fawn defies the odds. You ready for a bottle? Only a week after surgery, he's back on his feet and ready for more. Come on, handsome. Hey, I don't have it. I don't have it. Come here. Come here. She's got it. Come here. Look at you. Get your exercise. Whoops. Get on the carpet. Get on the carpet. Why don't you take that one and go to that end? We'll make him practice his walking. Up to this point, I was just concerned about this animal surviving. Now I'm concerned about him thriving. Seeing him up on his three legs, I'm just like, I think this guy can do it. <laughs> Here, Robbie. Dude, what's your, what's your issue? Is it because I'm not left-handed? He's really got good balance. I can't believe that he's standing. Me either. Robbie. Obby, look. Who is he with? Look, He's like, I can't, I'm, I'm struggling to turn around. There you go. Good job. I'm so proud of you. Because this is my first fawn that actually has a front leg missing, I'm going to be exceptionally careful with this guy. We need to make sure that he can balance well, that he can walk, that he can run. Everything that a regular four legged deer can do, Obby has to be able to do it too. It's a good thing he likes his milk so much, because if he didn't, he probably wouldn't think it was worth all this work. Exactly. Hey, Obby. Oh, Mom's got more. Mom's got more. Obby. Mom's got another one. Come on. Let's go. Good job. <laughs> he goes, I can't finish two bottles. I'm done. Thanks, Mom. Balancing on three legs is just the first step. Next week, he'll have to prove he can run and jump outside on some less forgiving terrain. Here, he left a little bit. <laughs> he didn't want to be a pig. Back at the wildlife sanctuary, Nancy checks up on her favorite new patient, and she arrives to some exciting news. Doc did some DNA tests to figure out that the gender of this eagle is a female. So I'm so excited because she's going to get to lay eggs one day and make more babies. Just excited. Freedom's looking a lot better, but it's not really flying yet. So I hope that Doc has some more information as to why it's still not flying. You got some x-ray of the wings. Did we find anything? Everything looks really good as far as skeletal structure, as long as we're clear. So was it just weak? No, she has a contusion or a bruise in her left shoulder where she had flown into something uh, and luckily didn't fracture a wing. Freedom's bruised shoulder is likely why she can't fly. A little more rest and care, and she should start taking short flights soon. That will begin her real rehabilitation process. That's when she can start really practicing and building muscle. Uh, and I think that could take two or three months. I have total confidence that she is going to fly. Cool, I'm excited. So I'll be back in a few weeks to see how Freedom's shoulder is healing. If its shoulder is better, then we'll be able to put it through some flight tests to see how it's really doing. Kristen's daughter, Adrian, now a licensed rehabber herself, rushes to deal with a crisis at a local shopping center. 
Mom called me to see about a situation in a parking lot with some baby ducklings and a mama duck. It's right in here, Sophia. Kristen is on the way, but the situation is too dangerous for Adrian and her younger sister, Sophia, to wait. So mom's on the move. And she's flying all over the parking lot, so Sophia's with her. And I'm going to go ahead and try to get the babies. We're going to go to a plan B and try to catch the babies first and see if the mama will come back to them. I'm going to get attacked by a duck here. So how many is that? Four, six, eight, ten. Oh. OK, I got all 12 babies. We aren't really sure why this mama duck chose to raise her babies in a parking lot. I guess she saw the really nice bush and decided that that was a safe place, but she was wrong. Hey, mama, it's OK. <sighs> Sophia, come on, come on. She's going to get hit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Watch, watch. Stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's parking lot pandemonium. Stop! As wildlife rehabber Adrian Allen and her sister Sophia try to wrangle a duck, leading them on a wild goose chase. Mama duck, come on, we're trying to help you. Sophia and I are having a really difficult time catching this mama duck because she just continues to circle and fly all over the place. So mom comes into the rescue and she's got a new idea. So guys, borrow this from the pet store down here. I put the crate inside of it. We're just going to let her go in, and we're just going to bide our time. Something you will learn as you get old. Patience is a virtue. Chasing a mother duck around the parking lot is not safe for the mama duck or the people chasing her. So now that I've come up with a plan, I really think that mom's going to go into that crate, and we can get this mama and her ducklings back in the country where they belong. OK, just stay there. We're blocking traffic right here, so this is OK. <laughs> Success. It was definitely a true test of patience. I'm like, you have to be patient when you're doing these things. You got to bide your time. You got to go someplace safe. I'll get you some water. I love you guys. Love you. A parking lot is no place to raise your babies. So Adrian and Sophia bring the ducks to a nearby location that will be perfect for this growing family. This will be a much safer place for them than that parking lot. You ready, Mama? OK, let's go. Mama Duck was not happy that we were trying to relocate her. But moving her to a new place, her babies are going to be safe, and I know that she'll be a lot happier. Come on, Mama. Your babies will follow. Come on, babies. You want to grab some, Sophia? Go find her! Go find her! Oh, is that 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and a mom. Look at them. They're going to live a happy little safe life here. Nikki and Fox families, the Dukes and the Foxy Bunch, are in a race against time. We're going to open this middle part. The Foxes will have a better chance of survival in the wild if they're released together. But one of the families isn't hearing the call to hunt. If they don't start kicking it up a notch and let me see that natural instinct, they're going to be staying with me for the winter. I'm going to walk you in there. Let me go on the other side. Nikki has one last trick up her sleeve, and she's hoping it'll put the foxy bunch on the path to release. Foxes learn behavior from other foxes. I want to combine these two families a little bit sooner than I even planned, just because I'm hoping that this more aggressive group can show these other ones how to do it the right way. It's a technique she's used before, but it does involve some risk. Yep, won't do their thing. On one hand, they might get in there and just love each other and be perfectly fine. But these guys are big enough that if they wanted to fight, they're going to hurt each other. Oh, there you 
There you go. There you go. No, I was nervous, but they're doing great. My last little step is to put mice back in here and see how the whole family does and make sure that uh, the ones that wasn't being aggressive can step up to the plate. And half and half or what? Yeah, I do half and half. All right, come on out. Come on. There you go, come on. I'm hoping this plan works. Live prey kind of kicks in that natural instinct. I got one. Yes! That was awesome. This makes me feel a lot better. I have seen exactly what I needed to see. The Dukes are doing great, but when the Foxy Bunnies kind of jumped in, it kind of got everybody going. These guys have caught up. They are all doing great. I'll sleep easy tonight just because these guys did everything that I needed them to do. They were pouncing, they're eating, they're fighting for their food. They're ready for the wild. I'm gonna give them a little bit more time just to fatten up, but they're ready. This is kind of like their graduation day. That is awesome. Sophia, will you help me take all these stitches out? It's been almost three weeks since Albie the fawn arrived at Kristen's home with a wound that nearly cost him his life. Just gonna clip the stitch here. The emergency operation to save him was a success, and it's time to see how he's healing. Kind of unthreads from there. I know, handsome, I'm sorry. The leg was looking good. The, the stitches were ready to come out. Hey, hey, hey. You're fine. This fawn is truly a little miracle. Um, it's amazing that he lived having the leg cut off. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. There we go. We done? Nope, yeah, don't yet, don't let him go yet. No. All right, I got him. The plan is to move Abby to a large outdoor pen with their other fawns. But first, they need to see how he navigates uneven terrain with only three legs. All right, buddy. Come on, handsome. Let's, Come on, Let's go out here and get some exercise. We just want to make sure that he gets around well, because he has to be able to run like the other deer. I know this is all new. Oh, he says, oh, grass. <laughs> Come on, Abby. There you go. Oh, little turkey. When Abby takes off like a shot, my heart sank. Letting Abby go at this stage of his life is like sending a baby out in the woods and saying, hey, see how you can do. Don't you dare. All right. Come on, Abby. There you go. Oh, little turkey. Arby the injured fawn is taking his first steps back into the great outdoors. Grab him. Come here, Abby. And the fact that he's down a leg doesn't seem to slow him down one bit. There you go. OK, fenced area for you. There you go. You did great. I'm so proud. We're going down to the fenced area. <laughs> Abby proved to me today that, by golly, he can run just like the other ones. This is awesome. I'm like, except you scared the bejeebers out of me. The good part of it was is, man, he was jumping over those branches like he had four legs. All right, quit throwing your fit, dude. It's been a long time since you smelled these smells and heard these sounds, hasn't it? Seeing him follow Sophia around is, is amazing. It's really amazing. When I got Abby in, he had no front leg at all because the hay baler took it off. It was a miracle he didn't bleed to death. And I didn't know if he was ever going to even live, let alone if he would be able to run out in the wild again. To see him out here is just unbelievable. Like it's, this is awesome. 
Abby says, stop crying. I know. He says, this is. This is seriously, it's not that hard. I'm awesome. <laughs> Let's take him to the barn. I think he's ready. Let's go. Abby's remaining time will be spent at a nearby barn, where he'll take his place among the other fawns that the Allens have taken in this season. Come on, handsome. Oh, yeah, she, he says, hello, friend. Hello. Oh, your tail moves. <laughs> fawns and deer are very social animals. They live in herds, and so this is important for him to know what he is and know that this is what's going to keep him safe when he's released. If all goes well in a few short months, Abby should be ready for release with all the other fawns. All right, Ob, we'll see you later, OK? Bye, Have fun Ozzie. with your new friends. See you in a little while. Nancy is back at the wildlife sanctuary to check in on Freedom, the juvenile bald eagle. See what's going on with Freedom and her boyfriend today. She's now in an outdoor enclosure with a full-grown male, and it seems the two are hitting it off. When we first put them together, he didn't like her too well. But after he figured out that she was young and single, <laughs> and uh, they now want to be close to each other. Aww. There she goes. Ah, there. Rick, I love you. This is so sweet to watch. These two definitely have some kind of chemistry. It's been a good thing for both eagles to have them together. And hopefully, we can release them as a pair. That's what I would like to do. With a steady diet and plenty of care, Freedom shows signs that her bruised shoulder is healing. I'm really amazed at how far she's come by the way she looked and how weak she was and just thin and now seeing the way she looks, it's it's amazing. Get you to step back in that corner. Okay. And I'm gonna walk down there and see if she'll fly from perch to perch. It's time to assess her wing strength with a flight test, a critical milestone before her release. I have never seen her fly in I'm really excited to see her at least use those wings just a little bit. You ready? There's a series of tests that they're going to go through to see her flight. And this one was a distance of 60 feet. Yeah, I think we're making her nervous. Come back. She made it. You did freaking awesome. First time and she's uh, went from perch to perch. That one good. That's really exciting. She passed the first test going from perch to perch. She flew so graceful. It was beautiful to watch her do that. We're really in a state of success at this point. I really believe both of them will get to fly. The next steps for this eagle is a little more practice in this flight cage because the more she flies, she's going to strengthen up those wings, the more confident she'll get, and the quicker she'll be able to be released. That was fun. They look great. I really look forward to seeing it released and flying and being free. Today, Nancy joins Nikki to say farewell to Nikki's posse of orphaned foxes. They've got creek that runs right there, and then there's no telling how many mice, bunnies, quail, everything else is out here for them. So it's a perfect food source. Yeah, they're going to love it. Nikki and Nancy dug a makeshift burrow for the foxes to use as shelter. And to be sure they see it, they'll funnel them directly into the entrance. If you just release them, they're going to take off running. I don't want these foxes to do that. I want them to know that this place is a safe place for them. Time to go. Go on.
with the last of the foxes in the den, one by one they venture out to explore their new surroundings. Right there. Come on, pick his little head out. Oh, they all seem really happy. They're so curious and playful. These guys are having an absolute blast. They are playing, they're kind of pouncing on each other and running back in. Seeing them running back to their safe place is the best thing I could have seen today. Oh, they love it. Look yeah, look. <laughs> this is paradise for a fox. My favorite part was watching them run and then they would hop in through the weeds like little rabbits. It was just hilarious. This is the day that I feel blessed. The fact that I could sit there and watch them play like that is, it was absolutely magical. These guys are not gonna just live, they're gonna thrive. They're absolutely loving this area. Hi guys, how are you? It's a big day for Abby the three-legged fawn and the rest of the deer that the Allen family rescued this season. Are you ready for your field trip today? Today is a super exciting day. We're going to move the fawns from the barn to Broadbent Wildlife Sanctuary where they're going to be released. Try bottles, try whatever's gonna work getting them in the trailer. All right, let's go. Come on, everybody. Come on, guys. Each of these animals has a special story to tell about courage and survival, but none quite like Obby's. Who would have thought that a deer that got his leg cut off by a hay baler would actually even survive, let alone be released back out in the wild again? This is like amazing. This is why I do this. Come on! Come on, let's go. Who wants the bottles? Follow the leader. Come on, guys. Come on, everybody out. The place where you're going is big and beautiful. I feel like I'm doing a deer dance here over here trying to keep them from getting through me. Even though they trust us and we've raised them, they're apprehensive. We're putting them in something that they've never been in before, so just gonna have to pick them up and put them in there. Here, Hannah. Come on, Hannah. With the last of the passengers loaded up, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> it's off to the sanctuary for the final stage of their rehab. Abby and his friends will spend a couple weeks in this large enclosure before being allowed to take full advantage of the sanctuary. Our fawns are really going through like kind of a soft release. They have to build up a little stamina. It's kind of like somebody that's training for um, a marathon. You don't just go run the marathon. You take small little steps. Have you ever seen any place this big before? They are so excited. They're like running and jumping. There goes Abby, go Abby, go! He's like, I got this, man, I got this. Three legs, yes. Every fawn you get, you're attached to. But like, Avi, if you don't count legs, you don't know which one is him. Avi, you're awesome. All right, guys, I think we need to say our goodbyes. Avi, it's a big world out here, dude. I know, you're gonna have to build some endurance out here, aren't you? I love you. All right, let's go. Avi is gonna do amazing here. Nobody's gonna tell him out in the wild that he only has three legs. I'm so proud of him. It's my last kiss.